Hi everyone, I hope you are all well. I am just going to make a um, video to hopefully encourage and inspire you to help you learn how you can create some beautiful decorative jars um, with your napkins. Obviously, us people who love to Bible journal um, like to quite often get pretty napkins and stuff like that that reflect and remind us of verses and stick them into our Bibles. And um, But I was like one day, oh, I've got all these lovely napkins. I, I know you can do this technique I'm going to give it a try give it a whirl and create some jars with them and they are beautiful absolutely beautiful so I want to hopefully encourage you to have a go at this as well and learn how this is done um, because they are great you can put them up in your house you can obviously give them as gifts and things like that to people um, so yeah i just thought i'd do this video for you i did do this video as a live video in our bless it for it bible journey community and um, so i'm doing a remake to obviously go on my youtube channel um i do encourage you if you're not part of our bless it forward um bible journaling group on facebook do come and find us we are a worldwide community of christians who love to be creative with god's word and we just love to encourage and inspire everybody that is in our community support everybody as we grow in god's word and grow in our relationship with god so do come and find us on there um as well so just throw that in there for you because i just love our, my my bible journaling family on facebook um so jars these pretty jars um let me start with this one this is my first one i made um about the end of january i've not been making them long i was really really impressed with my first jar how well it went i think i had a bit of beginner's look there um so i have had a few disasters i'll talk about that more as i go along um so but my really my first jar was really really impressed with so just to prove that obviously this is a napkin here is the napkin there we go um and napkins you can buy them from your local supermarkets you can buy them off ebay you can you know do happy swap so i've got two christian faith ones here you can see and um i have um uh, blah, blah, blah. got these in happy mail swaps i couldn't remember the word for it then got these in happy mail swaps um because obviously here in the uk we can't get hold of these very easily um so but um most of my napkins as well ebay have a look on ebay you can get lots of beautiful napkins on ebay um so let me just obviously lift this jar up and show you so this was a faith-based napkin i got in a happy mail swap from somebody from south africa how blessed am i and i thought oh i really love it i'm going to put it on a jar so there we go you can see i've, I've painted it to match the napkin and stuck the napkin onto the jar so let me pop that one out the way and again another faith-based one you know with these faith-based ones if you like me your bible journal with the napkins great to stick on jars you can decorate around your bible journaling areas your um thingy and um, bible journaling areas your house with them and as you obviously walk around your house and stuff with them you can be reminded of the bible verses that are on them to obviously encourage you because you know sometimes we need a bit of encouragement don't we just to remind us how faithful and wonderful our god is um another napkin um here that i've got on it it's got two different mouses on this one um i got this off ebay so yeah so they are the ones that i've done so far um, as I say, I've not been doing it long, so I'm, I'm just hoping to encourage you and hopefully you just give it a whirl too. Um, let me start then. So all you need is your basic everyday jars from your food cupboards. Um, you don't need to go and buy any special jars. Um, so this one was a pasta sauce one. This one was a gravy granule one. And this one that is here, I've got to share this, was a hot dog jar. I'm just going to take a few minutes, seconds here and minutes to say, um, as I said, I did a live video in our Bible journey community and my USA family were like, what do you mean a hot dog jar? Hot dogs don't come in a jar, they come in plastic wrapping. I was like, no, my hot dogs here in the UK come in a jar and they, they didn't believe me. So during the live video, I had to run off to my kitchen and grab my hot dog jar from the um, food cupboard to prove that my hot dogs had come from that jar um, I had. So also just for my video here, um, I want to prove that I'm not telling a fibby foo foo um, that my hot dogs do come in a jar. <laughs> okay, 
And now my USA friends are, are very jealous that I have hot dogs in a jar because I think they would prefer their hot dogs in a jar. But I was like, you've got Michaels, you've got Hobby Lobby. I have more to be jealous about <laughs> because we don't have the really, really good craft stores that you have. <laughs> um, so let me have another sip of tea, sorry. Mm. Right, um, yeah, so get your normal jars and all you need to do is give them a good wash a good clean let them dry or dry them if you want i tend to just let them dry on the side and then they are ready to go um what do you need to obviously put on the jar i simply use acrylic paint white acrylic paint oh that's just the same white acrylic paint um i don't buy any fancy acrylic paint i just go to my craft store and get the cheapest one i can find because that's all my purse can afford um i have used white gesso um i can't remember which jar i used it on i think it was on the mouse jar white gesso and i have only simply used white gesso because i went on to amazon to order myself some uh clear gesso and I didn't look what I was buying I just saw the um, title Diana Wakely gesso and I thought right that's it just instantly buy it um, and when it arrived I was like oh dear that's white gesso so as you know for us bible journaling people um, white gesso is a disaster if you go and use it in your bibling journal bible journaling with napkins because it turns your pages white and we don't want them to turn white we want to keep our pages clear um, but yeah you can use white gesso as well um so that's that now how do i add the acrylic paint to my jar obviously people will have all different ways this is the way i like to do it and the way i'm happy um doing it um so when i've added it on i have simply got a sponge like a little sponge thingy sponge paintbrush type thingy um if you haven't got one of them you can use um an everyday sponge and um, it might have under your kitchen sink um and all i do is i take my white acrylic paint um but let's give me a minute i'm just going to reach for something i need in a minute that fell on the floor as i clicked the video to start all you need to do is get your white acrylic paint on the sponge and dab it onto your jar like so uh, come quite close so you can hopefully see now i like doing it this way because it kind of gives it a nice bubbly effect a nice gives it a nice effect a nice spongy bubbly effect so some people obviously do like to paint their jars so it's smooth obviously i think if you want to do that option you are best to use a paintbrush um but i've not done that option um that option yet uh, because i like doing this option like this so and obviously you will go round and you will do your whole jar in this in this way obviously i want the video to be quick so i'm not going to obviously do this whole jar now um so obviously once you've done your whole jar and what you can do is you can leave it to dry naturally or you can get a heat tool or a hair dryer and obviously you can give it a good little dry um if you're impatient like me i say i'm so impatient when i'm crafting i want it done and i want it done now <laughs> i don't know obviously if anybody else is the same but i like to be like i want it doing now <laughs> sort of thing so you would go around and do your whole jar so obviously here's one i've done earlier and what i do is i put obviously the first coat on dry it then i will put another coat on and depending on how that coats look i might put a third coat on it will be completely up to you so this was two coats i was happy with how the paint went on i try and put it on quite thick the second time around um so obviously you see i've got another jar here done exactly the same way obviously depending on what colored napkin you're going to use so i just quickly bring back this one obviously you can see i did this one black because the napkin was black so maybe if you've got like different colored napkins you might have want to experiment with trying to blend in the you know like blue or something like that something to have a play around with it might go wrong it might not go wrong but you know you just have to that's part of crafting isn't it we have to test and try things um so you can choose to do different colored backgrounds there so that is that bit so one minute everybody i'm trying to obviously make sure i keep everything organized and clean and tidy because when i craft i tend to get very messy right so let's bring in a jar so how do i add it onto 
the napkin onto my um oh I've got an itch onto my jar. I'm trying to decide which napkins oh there are there and there. So I'm just having a look around my area to show you so I know what I've got. So I'm gonna bring my napkins. So I'm going to do one with this beautiful rabbit napkin I've got. Let me lift it up to you. Sorry, I forget. I'm using my phone screen and I'm just forgetting there that you might be out of picture. I'm gonna put this beautiful um napkin one on and I'm gonna put it on this jar here. So what obviously you have to do, let me just do this. Obviously, I've got my napkin. Obviously, I've prepared it so I can make this video a bit quicker, but this napkin is going to go onto this jar first but obviously first you have to prepare your napkin and so obviously what you need to do is i'm um, getting all flustered i thought i had a whole napkin i don't have a whole napkin so i'll just grab my other one because this is my other one i'm going to put on but what you have to do is you have to prepare your napkin so obviously your napkin i'm totally messing this up aren't i guys because my napkins are really prepared i can't remember which one i didn't prepare for the video mm, dear me <laughs> right so you have to prepare your napkin let's start again so obviously your napkin obviously will come like big like this um obviously and depending on your pattern obviously the one i've got here had two different panels so i've added one panel at the front one panel at the back um, obviously the one I'm going to do now is it's got four panels that are the same so I just need one panel so what you need to do is and just fold the napkin back up is you need to obviously cut your napkin up because you need to take the plies off the napkin and I find that easier to do if I have cut my napkin up so like so And um, I just, I don't know why I find it easier. Some people don't, you know, it's up to you. But obviously you need to find, pull back and you need to peel off the two extra plies that you get on the back. So you'll get three plies with a napkin. So there'll be another one on there. So that is the both plies. So that's one ply with the main picture on. So you need to separate them like that. Let me move that. Da, 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 trying to keep things organized so that's what you need to do then you will notice what i have done is i have gone round and i have teared carefully around the edge of the design that i want on my jar um obviously why have i done that is i have done that because i'm just going to use the contrast because obviously this one's black and i have teared around the edge and you can see that the edge is quite sharp um so i find um, if I tear around the edge when it's white, the edge blends in a lot better than if I didn't tear off the edge. I find it still leaves it quite sharp. Um, so I like to go around and carefully tear around the edge of the, obviously, the picture I want. Um, so it doesn't leave it as sharp. So all you simply do is very gently tear your napkin like this. So, yeah, hopefully... That is, you know, that's all you do. And you'd go round and you would do that for your whole pattern. So obviously, if you do Bible journaling and you use napkins in your Bible journaling, just prep it the same sort of way. Um, so I'm just going to move that out of the way now. And then how do you add it onto your jar? So there are two options here. And this is where I talk about some of my disasters. Um, when you put it onto your jar, obviously... I heard that you could use Mod Podge, which is obviously a water-based glue sealer and finisher. Um, I did try using this, but I found it very tacky and very sticky and I kept ripping my napkins with it and I got very cross with it and we've fallen out a bit. I'm not obviously, so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using it. You can use it. It might just come that I need to have more practice using it and things like that. But at the moment, me and my me and Mod Podge are not friends. We've fallen out because when I was trying to do my mouse napkin that I showed you, it ripped it twice. And I was like, I got a bit with myself and I was getting frustrated. So what I did is I went back to using um, what I used to create my first jar. And I used my clear gesso 
that I use when I Bible journal. Um, so that is what I used. I used some clear gesso. Um, and I have found for all my other jars, I've used the same and I've not had the same disaster that I had with Mod Podge. Um, but obviously, please know, I'm not saying don't use Mod Podge. Um, I think it will all come down to a personal preference thing. And maybe I, like I say, I just need more practice. Maybe me and Mod Podge will be friends in a couple of weeks time. Um, but at the moment, we're not talking. <laughs> um, so that is that. So to put it onto my jar. So obviously, I'm just going to look at my jar um, before I add it on. So obviously, you will know on your jars, you get your little lines where the labels go on. Um, you might not be able to see on the video and with the reflective light and stuff, but you get your little lines on your jar, which are the sides of the jar and where, you know, the labels go on sort of thing. So obviously, you need to try and look for that when you've painted it. So I've got one here. And so I'm going to have roughly one the other side because obviously they do get a bit covered up. You can't see. So I want my napkin to go on the front of the jar there like that. So all I simply do, again, other people might have different methods. It will all be an own, your, their own preference thing is I get my clear gesso and I will rub it all over the front of the jar where I want my napkin to go like so and then obviously you just simply take your napkin place it on your jar and then you will gently rub your paintbrush over the napkin and get it to roughly stick down and then take some more gesso and carefully smooth it over the top a bit at a time now you will get crinkles in it um but I think sometimes the crinkles will add a bit of character. I mean, obviously, the best, more you practice doing this technique, um, the less crinkles you might get in it. Um, so don't worry when you first try it, whether you get crinkles in it and stuff. You know, just have fun trying. You know, that is the whole point. So obviously, when you're doing this bit, you need to be doing it really, really careful, really, really gentle. Because if you are too heavy handed, you will rip the napkin. So as you can see, that has all gone on and I, that looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So I am happy with that. Let's get a bit more. So if you like, you can very carefully sometimes just pat down some some bits if you want rub your finger but obviously just please do be very gentle you don't want it to rip so that is that napkin on I'm happy with that what I would then do is I can leave it to dry naturally or again I can pull out my heat tool or my hair dryer and and dry it um and it's done that is it if I wanted to I could choose to add another one onto the back um because obviously you can choose to add another one onto the back if you want to but in general I'm not going to because obviously most of the time when you put it on your side it would do just display one side anyway what can you put in these jars um you can put in some fake flowers um so like in some of my jars i've got some fake flowers so you could put in some fake flowers like so it's hard to show you when i'm doing videos so you can put in some fake flowers um you can go and um oh i've ripped it now never mind i've ripped that one perfect never mind a good job it's a video isn't it and it's practice um you can put in some fake flowers um you can get some of those little fairy lights um where you put your batteries in and stick them in your jar and switch them on it'll light your jar up and things like that and yeah you can do all sorts it's completely up to you um then obviously i'm going to quickly put this bare one on as well so because i want to show you that obviously this one now it's got a little bit of a big B bit there and that's that. So just so you can see how I would think about it a minute and sort out. I think what I might do is just trying to think what I want to do is I'm just going to rip along here and take this B off. Let's try and show you what I did with another napkin. Let's say, there we go. Keep that bee. Don't throw that bee away. 
I'm just going to add him onto here. Obviously, I'm where my video is going on, so I'm trying to be quick. But obviously, I like to try and be as informative as I can to make sure everyone gets the right information. As you can see, just pop my gesso on there, line my bear up where I want him, and pop him on. Obviously, gentle, gentle. Obviously, he I might not have covered the whole area where the gesso needs to go. So what I tend to do is very carefully put on this bit. And then what I would do is I would very gentle flip that over a bit and just run some more gesso where that needs to go and then brush it round like so. There we go. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to brush some more gesso under there and brush it gently on, like so. So, yeah, anyway, I hope this is giving you a good idea of how to do this. Obviously, as it says, I'm not an expert, I've only done it a couple of times. I've, well, obviously, how many jars did I show you? One, two, three, four times. I've only done it four times um, correctly. I've done it six times altogether and two went horribly wrong with the Mod Podge. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, hopefully you're encouraged. So that is that on. So I just want to show you what I do then. What I've done is obviously I've still got that B here um, that I've had to took off because he was a little bit big to go on the jar. So I'm just going to still stick it on though. I'm going to stick him back roughly where he should have been, but I'm adding him on separate like that. There you go, because the napkin still blends in really, really well. So if you get little bits of napkins with bits like that, that is something you can do as well. So hopefully that is another nice little tip. Yeah, there we go. And that is that. There we go. So, yeah. Um, unlike me, make sure it's totally dry before you stick your thumb on it, because if it's not totally dry, you stick your thumb on it and you pull your thumb away, um, it will rip. Um, I just did that with the bunny one, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> so make sure it's completely dry before you touch the napkin. Um, otherwise, if you like, like I just said, I just touched the napkin and held it for a few seconds and pulled my thumb away, it ripped. Please make sure you completely dry it. Obviously, I'm not drying it now on the video because it will sound like a hurricane and I want to try and keep the video quick so that is that done um one more tip that i can say obviously as you can see on this video i have added some um all it is is simply some brown string um and i've wrapped it around a couple of times and stuck it on to add a bit of extra you can wrap it around just around this bit here or you can wrap it around the whole top bit it's completely up to you and and like i say um Stick some fairy lights in them, stick, you know, some flat, fake flowers in them, um, gift them to your friends, your family, um, stick them around your house. Um, yeah, just have fun. So hopefully this has encouraged you, inspired you. Um, thank you for watching. Obviously, subscribe to my channel, share my videos to help get, you know, get the creative ideas out there to encourage and inspire each other. And um, obviously, come and find us on Facebook. We'd love you to come and find us on Facebook and join us in the Blessed Void Bible Journey community. Um, so I will say goodbye now because this video is nearly 25 minutes long and you must be fed up with me talking. God bless you all. Take care and I will be back soon to make another video.